I'm not sure if you've noticed, but Bridget's been making some funny noises. As you can see, it's a little bit noisy and it seems to be getting worse. I've known about this issue since I've bought the machine, but we've limped on and we've got a few things done with the steam engine. But I think it's getting to the point now where we're really gonna have to diagnose what it is. So as you can see, I've taken the motor off. It's upside down, it's on the on the table. Um, there's nothing fancy about taking it off. It's just the two clips up there and the thing comes off. Obviously we're disconnected from the power and I have found issue number one. But I don't know whether this issue is the main problem with what we've got. The pulley here is effectively held in place with a key and then two screws that go in, two grub screws that go in and I don't think that's quite right. I think there should be at least three. I think it should be three points of contact. And what's happening is, because there's only two grub screws holding it in, it's now starting to wobble in the opposite direction to the screws. I think over its life, the belt has had too much tension put on it and it's basically ovaled the hole in this pulley which i believe is only cast aluminium so it's not very hard material to start with and i just think having too much tension on the belt has caused it to rock so i'm going to put the key in the opposite way around so it doesn't line up with the hole on that dint in the hole and then but before I do that instead of having one hole I'm going to turn it into three so I'm going to divide this up into three mark it all out and then drill through on the same pulley uh, and see if we can tighten it up that way um, and if that hopefully that will keep us going for a bit but i think eventually or if this fails i'm going to have to bore that out if i've got enough material hopefully bore it out put a sleeve in and do it that way but i think the three grub screws three points of contact should stop it hopefully right hopefully you can see that i've put some lines on scribed some lines on worked it all out so our original hole is on this line so that one we're, we're going to leave that um, but we're going to drill a hole down that line and that line on this this one I'll use that line that goes all the way through to get it square in the drill and then I'll just drill my hole through so there's nothing like heavy engineering here it's just, just get it as close as we can so I'll get it as close as I can to that line. Would help if I had a milling machine to do this, wouldn't it? Close enough. And then what we do, we slide it over it and again, I'm going to eye that up to the center of the drill somewhere there somewhere about there I think this will do us for what it's doing is I'm going to tap them what I can say is this is rather difficult to uh, tap 
you have to uh, get it started and then switch now I've had to put a recess inside because I tried it first and the tap wouldn't go all the way through so yes I've had to uh, put a recess in which is obviously why the others have recesses or counterbore or is that what it is counterbore so we get it started with that and then we have to swatch, swap to these which is not the best thing I should get myself one of those ratchet tap wrenches it'll be perfect for this job but anyway We'll get there in the end. Hopefully that'll do the trick. Right, so we get these little grub screws in here. Keep going. It's quite a long hole really. Oh, there we are, it's coming. And then we shall get the other one. And there. You can see what's going to happen here. This key is going to end up in one of these holes. So I'm going to cover those up. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover these holes up. Because I can see me having an accident. No chance of something falling in now, because it'd just be my luck that that would happen. Put the key in. It is very tight. Maybe I need to go below that little What's strange is it's tight now. Look, it's all tight, but I bet you as soon as I get it down past that circlet groove, it'll become the opposite. This will do us. There. Oh, it's tight now. How strange. Get the sear clip on. I'm going to start with the, the screw that goes to the keyway first. And I'm going to get that one tightened right up. Because what my plan is, is to use the key to lock it at the back here. And then we'll put the two other grub screws, tighten those up. And hopefully that should stop it wobbling that's the plan hmm. oh there we are we'll nip that one up then we'll go to this other one we'll nip the other one up then we'll tighten them right up right there we are
doesn't feel like it's wobbling now. It is still moving, but it's nowhere near like it was before. So I'm going to put the secondary grub screws in to lock them off and then we'll give that a try and then we'll see where we're at. And then if it doesn't work, if it starts knocking again, then we'll have to, we'll have to look at boring it out or finding a replacement. No, it's, these are the lock screws. hopefully we'll stop the other ones coming out hmm it would be a silly idea wouldn't it while we've got the motor off not to look inside. Hmm. Let's see what they look like inside. <laughs> 